present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. A what? Holiday? Hella, hella. Oh, hell of holiday. a day. Holiday. It's a hell of a day that I like to forget. There you go. I don't keep track of birthdays anymore, my friend. Hey, I forgot that I was uh, 71 instead of 70. Are you kidding me? Hey, don't let the public know how old you are. You're the great, mysterious, disembodied voice. You're the Pope of the Internet, the bon vivant. The poop, yes, the poop. The poop? Yeah. You're like the great Karnak when yeah. Johnny Carson, ooh, Johnny Carson, used to do Karnak. You know. Karnak the Magnificent. The first envelope. Remember that? Hello, everybody. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me get my uh, Blackthorn shillelagh. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madon of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And uh, we're here uh, at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, uh, pre recorded. Uh, and um, for those that are unaware of our existence, ah. just simply a Google or whatever browser you use, Mega Life 21, or Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, Mega Life 21, and you'll see it all. Hard hitting, progressive internet talk radio at its finest, no holds barred, unrehearsed, unplanned, ad-libbed, uh, no punches pulled, uh, uncensored. Um, it's not it happens to be the end of July 2015. Uh, I say this every year, but the months, the seasons, which the seasons uh, fly by very fast, especially seasons that people like, like kids yeah. and those that are beach lovers, beach combers, beach bunnies, beach bunnies. Beach bunnies. They, they always say summer goes by too quickly because uh -huh. summer is what they love. Now, I happen to like fall. I think autumn is a fun season. Um, but in their case, it's summer. You know, kids don't look forward to going back to school. I was one of them. I used to be very depressed when summer went bye-bye and September was roll, rolled around. Um, yeah, but that's only natural. Um, but there's no holiday, but the holiday, like my partner here said, is uh, my birthday, which is August 1st. And that will be coming up before the next show, I think, right? On the next show. Oh, August 1st Saturday. is Saturday. How about that? I didn't even plan it that way. It falls on a is, Saturday. 31st is Friday. Yeah. Oh, how about that? So, all right. So, next week's show will be my birthday. Uh, I, I, I do not... Normally, I do not pay attention to them. I do not count them anymore. But, since I'm doing this show for so many years, what the hell? You know, might as well mention it. Anyway... I want to introduce to you my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm fine, I think. It's hot. Hazy, hot, yeah, and humid, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 86 today. The lazy, hazy, crazy days and of this summer. all week. A couple of 90s or whatever. Yeah. And everything like we it. discuss at the beginning... Well, like throughout the show, it's all part of our new series called Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Feel the energy of that conch. Or I'll conch you on the head with it. If you happen to be Republican. 
do. See, I, I, I hear, I get messages from from King Neptune here, or SpongeBob SquarePants. There you go. I was told the other day that I, I should start saying some nice things about Republicans. Why? I can't think of any. Well, I asked the person, I said, well, then name me one thing that Republicans have ever done for you. Unless you're, the person is rich and the person doesn't pay taxes. The person could not come up with anything. The, but there is none. That's correct. That's correct. Honestly, I'm just, we're just being honest here. Um, well, the Republicans, since Republicans, conservatives, uh, collectively, can't really effectively debate someone with facts. They, they, they have the inability to effectively debate because they have no true facts to back up anything they say. They just blurt out crazy, insane one-liners. They, they're obnoxious. They try to uh, uh, over drown out you, overshout you, interrupt you. They, um, they have the talking points. They just blurt out nonsense. Uh, and they're not shy about letting you know what their true agenda is. They're not shy at all about it. And since they're pretty much in charge, they, uh, they don't care. You know, so uh, so they 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 called. Uh, I thought this was really stupid because it's it doesn't even apply. It's so dumb. They called Bernie Sanders a Nazi. Oh, I suppose he's a Nazi for wanting to force the rich to pay their fair share in taxes and to and to and to actually take the money to run the country effectively repair the infrastructure and, and roads and bridges and help the poor. I guess making the rich pay their fair share in taxes is something they don't like. So they call the man a Nazi. The Most of those conservatives when they say something about Nazis or socialists, the Nazis were called the National Socialists. They were fascists in that. But they weren't socialists. Aren't they fascists in actuality? Yes. Fascist means the corporations are married to the government. Mussolini yeah. and Hitler, that's what they were. They were they were dictators of the fascist kind. Stalin and Lenin yeah. were dictators of the uh, uh, totalitarian yeah. kind, but they called themselves communists. Well, <clears throat> but they weren't communists. Communism, socialism, capitalism. These are economic systems, not political. Is this why Republicans and tea, tea baggers have their political definitions all screwed up? Correct. Correct. They think of Nazism, they think of socialism as totalitarianism, which is a political system, not right. a economic system. Right. And, and, and fascism, for those that can't let it sink into their thick skulls is the uh, the joining of corporations with the government You're right. which means plutocracy uh, corporate oligarch corporate plutocracy you know uh, if you want to say the one percent control the top 20 percent you can say plutocracy or collectively you can say oligarch like you said it doesn't matter anymore just means the elitist. Just matters that, that we are not in control. We are the majority, and we are not in control in our own country. That's what matters. No, because um, you know, of course, uh, the uh, Republican uh, House of Representatives uh, voted uh, to not allow uh, Monsanto's GMO uh, labeling. The the. To, to keep it off the labels. So, of course the Republicans are going to be pro-Monsanto, pro-Big Oil, pro-Big Pharma. Of course. of course. It's a given. I mean, they're, they're, they're bought and paid for. 
by these corporations. So they're, they're, you know, it doesn't surprise me. Like people get all shocked when they read the article. Hey, <laughs> but they keep voting for them. That therein lies the problem. There, you see that banner with that old hillbilly shack in Kentucky. See, these are the <laughs> these are the people. I forget what that county was called, but there's Wolf County and that county, and they're all on food stamps, SNAP, and welfare, and etc. And they vote Republican. It's like shooting yourself from both feet. There you go. It makes no sense. Exactly. As, as Spock says, very highly illogical. Captain. Captain, you you are voting way way against your best interest. I mean, it's like um, it's like a person that's getting getting lynched in public, paying a fee to the person <laughs> putting the noose around their neck. Well, aren't they? Aren't they yeah, here, that, let me. Here's a little sum. Go buy yourself something since you're putting a, a noose isn't around that my neck. What is happening with the uh, privatized prisons? You're paying for your room and board. Oh, room and board. Wow. Hell, man? Wow. Oh, five star hotel there, huh? You know, uh, at Billy Morrow says, oh, well, they should earn their keep. You know, a lot of Republicans seem to think that convicts are living high on a hog for free. Like they're hey, in a hotel. On food stamps are, too. Oh, you're living high people in the hog. Welfare are too. Yes. Oh, welfare. Wow, $140 a month that they get in New Jersey. Oh, you can really live on that in 2015. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, anyway, before I forget, the lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh go Bernie Sanders in 2016. All right, I want to kick it off uh, really quick. Um. I want to say greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Um, and to all my Facebook group administrators. And that's it. You know, I put... The new one whose I, name I, is I, Melissa. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you know, I always got to write that down and I forgot. Again, you reminded me. I want to uh, say hello and give greetings to my uh, my newest administrator of uh, one of the five groups called Everything is Food. Uh -huh. Yes, it's a foodie group, food and drink. Melissa, I send greetings to Melissa, my newest administrator. Everything is food. All right. I put that, you know, I, I send greetings. I, I, I mention them by name, all the administrators and friends and, that I keep in contact with, and only like a, a one or two acknowledges Excuse me. under the, the show, God bless you, under the show that, that I, you know, I, I gave a shout out to them. They, they, lately, they haven't been acknowledging it. That they watch so, the show. So why should I met nothing? Nothing. Not even thank you for giving me a shout out. Nothing. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention all their names. No. 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 That's it. Quick, short, and quick and easy. Um. It's the same thing with the newsletter. How does anybody know what the show, what the uh, group, what the what the whole thing is about if they don't read the newsletter? That 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 new show I did with Sash Boyle. Nobody in the uncensored, hard-hitting truth Facebook group. Not one view. Clicked like, commented, or acknowledged the existence. Or shared it. Or shared nothing. So this. This kind of te this tells me this shows me that there are many so-called progressives that talk to talk, but they don't walk the walk. I wonder how many of them voted this past mm. November the fourth, two thousand fourteen. They didn't because that's how the uh, Republicans got in. Well, I don't want to hear them complain. Then, if you don't vote, 
keep your opinions to yourself. If the people that came out for Obama in 2012 came out in 2014, that was like over six million more people. We wouldn't have Democrats. We wouldn't have. There wouldn't be no Republicans in the House. No, and 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 old ugly turtle face would not be the uh, yeah the Senate majority leader. Leader. He would most likely be um, reelected because the people in those red states, those religious nut red states like Kentucky, they're numbskulls. So they they would have uh, reelected him. But he wouldn't be in the spotlight as the Senate Majority Speaker. Well, they, he said that, that they weren't ready to elect a woman. That's why he won. Oh, that's a nice thing to say. Well, it, it, it's, it's applicable for a Republican to say it. Yes, it is. Not a nice thing to say, but... They say bad things about the blacks, the Hispanics, and women all the time. And yet what? They got some blacks, they got some women, they got some Hispanics that um, actually vote for Uncle them. Tom. They actually vote for black, them. Uh, black Uncle Tom and, and Hispanic <coughs> I had a person forms here. of Uncle Tom. And the other day I was speaking with, he said he's going to vote for Ben Carson. Oh, really? Yeah, the black, uh, the black guy running. The religious nut and jerk that said that stupid stuff against the Constitution a while back. You didn't even know the Constitution. You're going to vote for him? They don't even what are you, know. Out of your mind? They don't even know the Bible. And they well, wanna, that's another issue, ain't it? And they want to make the Ten Commandments the law of the land. They they want to they want to combine church and state. And they break the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me, including money. I doubt it. That's money. They got the wrong God. He ain't the God of the Bible. Okay, their God is really money. Money. As you say. And they acknowledge Sunday is the Sabbath. Well, that's the mark of the beast. Right. That would okay. be the mark of the beast. I only have one more thing to say, but it's a doozy. Oh, dear. Oh. The, um, the wonderful... Scumbag Scott Walker, piece of shit, oh, yeah, scumbag, yeah. and I, uh, and those two words are in capital letters with quote, quotations, scumbag, Scott Walker's comment recently, um, there was another choice word I used for Scott Walker, uh, but I, I would say scumbag is sufficient until I can remember the other word. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Scott Walker, who is now, you know, running for president for 2016 as, a, as part of the Republican clown bus, says that by not giving the poor health care, by not helping the poor, you're actually doing the poor a big favor by allowing them to experience and achieve the American dream. Yeah! The American dream is only designed for the rich to experience, not the poor and the middle class. It's The system is rigged for the rich to experience the American dream. How, uh, what, what, what experience did he really mean? The experience to die young? To die before your time as a poor person? I don't know. It probably has something to do with freedom. Well, he doesn't want freedom. He doesn't want. He doesn't want the poor to have Obamacare. Well, well none of them do, really. He doesn't want unions. He doesn't want uh, teachers. He doesn't want firefighters. He doesn't want police. He doesn't want the government paying for anything. He doesn't want welfare at all. Well, that's even you know that's another matter. And what's even worse, he wants to steal. Oh, where's my shillelagh? He he. Scott Walker and all Republicans want to steal your, and I repeat, your Social Security. That's not an entitlement. The, uh, the, um, the, the best system that came out of FDR, they want to destroy. Okay? 
okay? Mm-hmm. Instead of expand. It's going broke. That's their big talking point now. It's going broke. You saw, you saw Oh, we have to raise the retirement age. To 70. To 70. So you drop dead. Yeah. Before you collect, yeah. before you retire, and, and heaven forbid, well, you en enjoy what, one day of happiness. You hear what the one jerk came out and said? God wants us to work forever. These are, all, the, these are all excuses to steal your social security. They're and all excuses. And to make you a slave for the, for, for the man for your lifetime. Right, and be a slave to, you, to, to the man. And yeah. like Scott Walker says about, you know, bullshit about experiencing the American dream uh, uh, by, by helping the poor, the, you're not allowing them the freedom and the, to, to, to strive for and experience the American dream. They're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. Because it, the, only the rich can experience it. And this is just an excuse not to help the poor. Exactly. We are coming to a time in this country, and most likely in all countries, industrialized countries, well-developed countries, yeah. when there will not be enough, I mean, we're experiencing it right now in America, there will not be enough jobs to allow those who want to work to work and earn a living. Aside from the American dream. We will have to yeah. find a annualized income for these people so that they will be able to participate in the economy and etc. Well look all, all the jobs that, that have been outsourced already. Well that's because we allow that. We don't have to. You call you call um any company's customer service and there's a good chance that those people will have accents. They'll be in the Philippines or wherever. You're correct. You know, and, and they've outsourced. It's not just manufacturing, industrial, it's office work. They're in the Philippines now. You know, so uh, I mean, it, it, like you said, it, it will. there will come a time when they, there really won't be nearly enough jobs just for people to be employed for forget about that American dream right. fantasy crap no they won't be able to be employed That's right. and and for you fools out there you lemmings that be still believe in Ronald Reagan and his trickle-down economic system forget it it's a lie it never worked it was never meant to work what we have is siphoned up to the top 20% economics. Siphon up to the fat cats. Okay. Uh, I wanted all. to explain this because we've had some uh, misunderstandings concerning this though. About trickling down? About trickle down. Well, trickle the, down the fantasy. It yeah. was a fantasy developed by the conservatives so that they could sell their ideas of tax cuts for the rich, all benefits going up to the rich, will allow them to invest and provide jobs and therefore trickle down. It will benefit you people but, but on the, the bond. But the words trickle down was the, was the fantasy. It was part of the... Correct. That's why no one should be interested in that as a economic system. However, because they have the they have apparently they have the right not to allow anything to trickle down. That did not occur under Reagan per se. Yeah. It's been around for a long time. Oh. Under Reagan, they changed their tune. They changed their tune to supply side economics. Which meant that did you ever see the movie Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. Supply side says, no, it's not demand that allows you to make products and etc. Really? and the people, uh, the consumers buy it. Not demand? We will make the products. Supply. We will have the supply. And that will create its own demand. 
Then you had idiots like Laffer and his Laffer curve. Well, there are and people, there are companies that would spend money running an infomercial on something you don't need, something that may not even work that well. And because of well, all that's how you try to get to because of all the, the snake oil sales hype, people that are impulse buyers would buy it, especially Americans. They'll buy it and then they'll 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 find out it's a piece of shit. But but meanwhile the company that scammed you just made a, a small fortune. Yes, but supply side, if you followed it as a business, let's say you opened your business tomorrow. And you made all these products. Put them in a warehouse. Now you have to create a demand for them. The commercial. What if they don't buy? Them? You go belly up because now you yeah. paid. You paid all these people to to make these goods, etc. Now you can't sell them. Right. You have to have demand coming from down below. Like when Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton got were stuck with all those uh, kitchen supply utensils. There they can core a apple. There you go. They couldn't sell them. There you go. So you know, you if your inventory is collecting dust in a warehouse or, or your home, and that's going to happen if you can't create a demand yeah. for them. Hey, the, C the, C them. the CEO of Papa John's uh, explained this whole thing by one sentence. I am not obligated to share the prosperity of my company with my employees. I am not obligated well, to share it. So he, which, didn't, he didn't get that from himself. No, he, he got that from J.P. Morgan. Yeah. And um, the big oil guy. Then how does supply side... I'm not responsible for what my... my uh, Employees. Well, that's proof that supply want. side and trickle down can't work if companies reserve the right not to trickle down, not to. Yeah, but why would share. you even be interested in trickle down? We're back to this, you know, situation. Well, if it, if it truly, if the jobs were not outsourced and it truly did trickle down, people would have money to put back into the economy. In the trickling down. You are also siphoning up. That's why it, it, it you know, it was promulgated to work. If yeah. you don't siphon up first, you ain't gonna get no trickle down. No, well, the, well, profit. But why would you be satisfied with trickle down? Some profit would be reinvested in the company. And the not the company. We're Here not we go again. I know where this is leading. Exactly. To. We're talking about. All I know is when I went to school, I had the Webster's Dictionary, and the fucking thing said trickle down, trickle down, 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 down. And what's the definition? It trickles down. What trickles down? From where? Anything. Water. Money. All right, but from where? You're talking now. From about, the top. But we're talking about a economic system, not a CEO, not a business. What usually happens? What usually happens? This guy, it's, it, it, he's the, the economics professor of the whole Andro Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy. Correct. You know, you got first. What's going to happen is most likely is the CEO is going to take an astronomical salary off the top. Then he's going to siphon up, isn't it? He, then he's going to take a percentage, which is funny about percentages. It could be fair or it could be a ripoff. And he's going to invest it back into the corporation. Then whatever trickles down could be could be shit. It could be hogwash. It could be pitiful. But what does that have to do with an economic system? All right. What is what your is a business? All right. That you're Dr. About? Bill, who ran for president in the past, what is your system that will effectively be much better? Then supply side and trickle down. God's economics. Very simple. God's economics. You you know. You, what, what if we dropped dead and 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 the Bible was? Uh, what if ancient aliens were were right? What does that have to do with an economic system that is promulgated in the Bible and is uh, very very fair? What I say what to does you. What I say to you and what I say to Ken is don't interfere 
Don't involve religion with science and God. You can't depend on that. We're talking economics. We're not talking Bible, religion. We're talking God's economics. How could you sell God's economics to the public if, if nobody could prove that their God exists? It doesn't matter if the system works. Well, God's what the hell does that have to do where it God's came from? E God's economics. It's the same thing with you see, once I say because trickle, once I say trickle down, this guy shakes his head. He he shakes it because he wants to bust James P. Madonna's balls every because goddamn James, Saturday. James P. Madonna, ma Madonna, he Madonna. He just do it. He just does it to bust my balls. He ain't getting it. That's why trickle, he's dickle. concentrating on a CEO and a business when we're discussing an economic system. Now get that through your head. You're trying to say that trickle down, if it, if it really, if it wasn't a fantasy, will not be effective. No, I'm not saying that. See, I'm he's saying contradicted. it's not a business. It's an economic system. All right, just stick to fuck, stick to God's economics. Whatever you want to say about God's economics, I'm done. And if you want to start the first reading, you can do that. But if you want to say no, something about God's economics, I don't get it. I don't understand what you mean because I know logic, black and what white. Is, what is an economic system? An economic system yeah. is part of the government, which regulates and controls the the money the the circulation of money within a country is that the, the same distribution thing? of money is socialism and economic system uh it, it, it can be if it shares every the the no, prosperity no, no. You, equally you put too much into things it's sharing it equally socialism is a sharing system no it isn't it's a system where the government owns everything then what do how what about do, fascism? Is well, how do they determine system? how do how do people survive under socialism if it's not a sharing system? Equal, equal. They equals. get paid just like under uh, capitalism. Everybody has their going rate for their profession, job, career, whatever. There is no whatever. Whatever, because that has nothing to do with the government owning everything. The government owns the means of production. Okay. Socialism. What right. about communism? So all the natural Is communism an economic system? I am not familiar with the differences between uh, communism. We're not interested in the differences. I asked a simple question. Is it an economic system? No. Why isn't it? What are you talking about? Of course, they're all economic systems, but they have nothing they're, to do with CEO they're not political and systems. his business. They're not political systems? They're well, not. they end up being political systems, but they are not political. Political is totalitarian. They are economic systems. CEOs and business are part of the economic system, but they are not it. You and this fucking bust of my job, how much time did it suck? You know Quite what? a lot, but it has to be clear. Because you keep on contradicting no, everything. You keep contradicting. You twist and twist and twist. Who brought up the CEO and his business when we were discussing an economic It st all started with trickle down and supply side being a fantasy that was sold. But to they the were public. economic systems, correct? Yes. But what does that have to do with a CEO and his business? Nothing. In the United States it does. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Alright, uh, under socialism, that same guy who runs Papa John's Pizza. He would have a certain salary set by the government. As a CEO, okay. Correct. He wouldn't be making astronomical amounts of Why money. Why would he? He doesn't own the company. Don't bust by! Don't don't under, don't put down what I'm saying with sarcasm. I'm 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 I have to give detail for the public, for the viewers. How could he be demanding when he does not own the company? The company is owned by us, I'm the just, government. It's called echoing. I learned I learned it at doing customer service. You echo back to the person on the phone so they but understand stop. the details. Then stop echoing the CEO and his business. 
which well, has nothing to do what you're with saying the what you're system. saying is the CEO gets a sa a salary just like a uh, um, because he manages just like a fair possible he's thing. not an owner or etc he manages so everybody has has a set Jeez. salary every uh, um, let's say a surgical procedure has a reasonable set fee those are things that are worked out I'm talking about the big picture economic systems communism socialism capitalism and God's economics they are all economic systems all right then how does how how does um stop overthinking how do people get paid if, if the CEO has nothing to do with this system, uh, economic system how do the people get paid and what do you pay them where do you get the money from we run the government you get it from the under socialism the government owns a business Papa John's Pizza. Let's just use him as an example. The we Motherfucker. set the salary. Uh huh. We set it. All right. The government. But why are you even thinking about that? We are not discussing that. We are discussing several economic systems. I wasn't. And I wasn't trickle even down and supply side were given to us as fantasy economic systems. What does that have to do with a CEO and his business? Nothing. Nothing. You think These so? These huh? economic systems have different ways of expressing themselves. Everybody's a fucking guru. Everybody's a guru. Everybody wants to be number one. I swear. What the hell even does that even on my fitness group in uh, in Facebook, everybody's got to be friggin' uh, Apollo on Mount Olympus. What does that have to do with discussing the economic systems? Because those this, four this that I how, elucidated. This is how people. This is where they get the money to pay people's salaries. So, uh, what what the CEOs do and don't do, I'd say, is important. Under socialism, there are no CEOs. There are managers. Here we there go are again. cooperatives where the. The, uh, the employees own the company. Like that competitor for... Like for, in Spain today. Like that, like that competitor for uh, Walmart. It's a, co uh, it's a company, it's, a, it's an employee-owned... Owned company, that's correct. ...chain of stores. Yes. I forgot that's the name. That's the way that those, that particular economic system handles things like that. Yeah, so like where Walmart, you have the extremely rich Walton family controlling everything, because, like a totalitarian government. Because that's under capitalism. Right, and then you have the employee own, and I, I should have wrote it down, the, the, the competitor that's breathing down the neck currently. You're talking of Walmart. about wagons or wagons or, or the other one? It's, it's, a, it's a, no, I no, it's I not that, it's wagons. another one. But there's two of them. Wagons, too, is the same thing. They pay their people quite a bit of money and they're still making profits yeah like like the Costco uh, the president of Costco, Costco too, treats his yes, people well thing. look we're back to the same bullshit that every goddamn week it said I can't pay fifteen dollars an hour of course uh, can. minimum wage yes you can you fool because you know why it's tax deductible it's a write-off yeah and fi fuck and fifteen like like the Chisler's Hall of Shame, I'm glad you reminded me. That CEO of uh, Dunkin' Donuts was crying, bitching and moaning about $15 an hour minimum wage. He can't do it. Meanwhile, and then it listed his salary. Astronomical. Oh, what did he do? Siphon up some more. He got, the guy gets almost $5,000 an hour. Siphon up some more. He's complaining about $15 an hour which still is not equal to the cost of living, the high cost of living. This dude's getting almost $5,000 an hour, and he's complaining about well, The problem is there are people who listen to that. People are, okay. are, are focusing, like nobody's calling them out, nobody's challenging these people when they say these things. Nobody in the media is saying anything, but, and then these people put the banners on the internet and everybody gets all upset. Well, 
What about when the person first makes the insane statement? Who is who is heckling them? Who is protesting them? Donald Where, Trump. Where's the rebuttal? <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump. Now, to make one thing clear, you must understand this about these economic systems. The difference between socialism and capitalism is capitalism allows for private ownership. Okay. Socialism is government ownership. Now, and what that's are, why the capitalists and the conservatives and the Republicans, they hate that. Because they like private ownership. Well, that, that allows... Private Because that property. allows a, a plutocracy or an oligarch. That's correct. And gated communities. And it's Elite, the elitist mentality. Elitism. I'm That's better correct. than you. I'm a multi-billionaire. You're correct. worthless. That's correct. You know, uh, meanwhile, everyone's grave is the same size. Yeah. Now, uh, communism versus socialism. Very little difference there? Very little, except for, as uh, <coughs> Marx said, we're not ever going to get communism unless it's a revolution. So, to get com uh, communism, <coughs> there would be a lot of bloodshed. Well, uh, is communism uh, worthwhile to have? That depends. Well, if you ask which you prefer and you would do without God's economics, I would have to pick socialism. Socialism allows the churches to uh, function, right? Yeah, it has nothing to do with that stuff. It, it, it's government ownership of the means of production. Right. Simple. Well, the, 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 the fact that the churches couldn't operate under the Soviet Union is because it was a totalitarian... That's correct. Totalitarian. Which is like a dictatorship. Is a dictatorship. Just because things have different words does not mean they have different meanings. You ever hear the word synonym? And not cinnamon. I'm talking about cinnamon. Synonymous cinnamon. words. Yes. They mean the same, spell different, look different, whatever. But they're like you will find the thesaurus. You know? Is that an old dinosaur? Thesaurus? Yeah, um, thesaurus. Um, well, I was going to say, oh, uh, so Ed Schultz got canned. Huh? That's correct. I told you it was only a matter of time. And Ed Schultz was not even... Uh, Who else got canned from Fox News? Napolitano. Uh, yeah. Because right, telling the truth. Didn't you see his rant up there on uh, Facebook? No. Oh, he had a truthful rant. So his ass went out the door. Well, now, and now he's probably anti-Fox. Well, you probably know... Probably saw the light now, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Maybe not. Uh, what about uh, Schultz? Was uh, Schultz yeah, wasn't said. a hard heavy? Schultz, Schultz was no heavy hard hitter. Well, it's just a matter of time. Rachel though, Maddow is not a uh, hundred uh, percent. She'll be out soon too. Rachel Maddow is not a hard hitter. Well, if she keeps doing that, maybe she'll stay around. But if she's look, the truth can't be stopped. Does and do, when the let me ask you a question. Told. Let me ask you a question. Is Rachel Maddow and um, and uh, Mr. Schultz, what the hell's his fucking first name? Ed. Ed Schultz. Did they go into details about the Koch brothers and Wall and and uh, Monsanto? Do they go into details about them? Ed Schultz was over there in uh, uh, Wisconsin against Scott Walker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why. That's what, he's why a M union man. But MSNBC is supposed to be the progressive network, right? No, they're not progressive. They're not. Liberal. What do they call themselves? Maybe liberal. What's the difference between liberal and here we go again with difference. words? There's a, a big, big difference. difference. Liberals more t more to the left than progressive, right? Progressives are more to the left than liberals. So, progress progressives are like the populists of the old times, right? Don't confuse them with populists. Populists are are down the lower classes. You're trying Poppins. to tell me that a a liberal is more moderate than a He's than more a towards the center, yes. 
Now, what about the people? What about the, liberal the turn. what about the pussy pacifists that are afraid of offending somebody? Are they liberals or progressives? Centrists, maybe. Centrist. How could they be in the center if they're if they're if they're if they're like hippies and and they want a big friggin' love in and they're afraid of offending? They are fence sitters. Groups. You just, you just said they don't want to offend anybody. They got to be centrists. The pacifists. No, center means moderate. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Moderate is halfway between uh, a yeah, liberal I'll and right wing. I'll take you and I'll take you. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm sitting on the fence here. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, what you said over there on the left, ah, that's cool. That's no, no, cool. I'm saying... Oh, on the right, yeah. No, oh, when I, I think of moderate, I think of somebody who's partially conservative and partially, but not too conservative, you know, like... No, 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 don't put the twos in there. Why not? Because it's either or, 50-50. Well, you're a fence listen, sitter. I'm, when it comes to helping the poor and taxing the rich, I am to the left. When it comes to kowtowing and giving people, groups of people, special treatment, I'm to the right. Well, there you go. So, I'm not a Republican, but I'm not an ultra leftist either. Because if I was an ultra leftist, I would. Um, Forget about. I, I would be a victim of everything. I have said many times. Forget the labels. You either do what is right, or you do what is wrong. Period. I always, I always thought progressive That's and all. liberal were worse synonymous words. No. Well, I gotta look them and up. Forget about them. No, don't look them up. Now, what do we call our show and our group on, over don't on the call internet? Call it anything. What do we call it? Call it right or wrong. What a What's wrong with that? You know what? Wait, were well, you the one that told me that cops should be like the Bobbies in London and not carry no, guns? No, that's what you said. Somebody told me that. Yeah, well, don't confuse I don't think my it was words. you. No, I don't think. Don't it was ever you. take my words, someone else's words from their mouth, and put them in mine. And why? Never. Then why do you say things? Because I want to be quoted accurately. I have a reputation to uphold. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't think you were the one that told me. It could have been someone else. It's too preposterous. I, 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 you would have to be uh, borderline insane somebody to say a cop it, should be uh, on Somebody line. said it on Facebook in line with Diane Feinstein's stupid comment. That old bag. Okay? Oh, man. And the gunman will put down his gun if nobody else has a gun. That's just human nature. And why don't we all sing Kumbaya, yeah. Oh, the people that want everybody to sing Kumbaya, they would be progressives or liberal? The people who want to make friends liberal. with their liberal. Republican Liberal. Uh, uh, but I'm colleagues. telling you to forget about labels. Well, you gotta have, you gotta have a, a, a way of distinguishing yourself from the enemy. You have to have something to distinguish you. You know what distinguishes Gary Null from all those other, uh, whatchamacallits? He's liberal. That he wants to do what's right. Period. And that's nothing to do with well, politics. You can't, you can't call a, 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 a group or an organization do the right thing. It's, it sounds well, kind of dumb. What's wrong with that? It sounds dumb. Well, that's your interpretation It sounds it. corny. It's like, you got, people... You want a label. People have to be, people like to put things in compartments. Well, that's fine with them, but that's not the way life is. Yes, life people is are about right and wrong. Listen, period. Don't you have lobbying groups that have themselves in compartments? That's correct. Don't but that's what you want to do away with, no? Don't, don't you want to reform all of this crap? Feminists, or you just want to enter into? Aren't it? feminists who uh, want to pass laws just to help women, and all they care about is having a woman president? Aren't they in the compartment? So, you want to do that too? Put people in compartments? I'm not here to compartmentalize and label. I'm here to change things. Well, right make now, them right people who where think, they're wrong. Right now, people who think like us are called progressives because they don't really use the word liberal anymore. Because the liberal word has been demonized by the right wing. This reminds okay. me of the, the song, you say tomato and I say tomato. 20%, 1% plutocracy, oligarchy. It's more than that, though. It's more than that, because you want, you want reform. 
you don't want the same labels. You want to do away with labels. You and what do you call somebody with a specific philosophy of Call them whatever the they politics. call themselves. I'm talking about the ideal situation that you want to set up. Well, you can't say, to do with you labels. can't use the word the right thing to do because the word right has been associated with conservatives. Fine. So you can't use so that. So don't use it, but I'm talking right or wrong. Listen, I'm not talking about I, a political God's economics thing. is a very fair way, No. very I'm loving kidding. Fair. Uh, uh, there is no politics per se. Whoa, it's no. a very sharing uh, way to live, and and um, there's no wars. There's no greed. There's no corruption. You know, it's an ideal uh, world. All right. That's the best way I could describe it. Because that's the way it will be done in the ideal world of the millennium. It sounds like it sounds like a world without. Satan without evil. Well, he's going to be put away for a thousand years. Yes, it is without Satan. Well, right now, unless there is a second coming of Christ, right now we don't have the God uh, any chance, logically, scientifically speaking, of the God's economics. Right now we have what we have. We have people to the left and people to the right. This is what we have, and people and that have, are moderate. We have something called usury, which means interest. Under God's economics, there is no interest. Standards will never change. Because you, because you had okay. a you 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 had a win on, on, on a, a, a debate based on words, word meanings, and twists. It's it's already time for your lunch. Anyway, I didn't win any debate. Where was there a debate? About it's it's their technicalities. They're they're yeah, but their technicalities when somebody is going off on some tangent it's with not CEOs a tangent. and business and and equating them with an economic system. Well, I said was that I know the, what you the, say. The, the people in charge of the companies, whatever you want to call them, they can and they do. Get away with not sharing the pros prosperity of the of the company. under capitalism. Under capitalism, with the employees. That's only one economic system, out of the four that I gave you. All right. But again, what the hell does that have Listen, to do? Listen, I gotta go to the fucking bathroom. You want to go? Yeah, I'm gonna be going soon. All right, we're gonna break for lunch. Big fucking deal. God damn it. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the
real hard-hitting truth, you need newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, lunch is over. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III. I forgot to mention his name because uh, we were pretty upset before, but he did uh, he did promo commercial, as you saw, and we and you also saw the uh, how to defeat a conservative Bible verses, which you can pause. <clears throat> and read. You could still pause and read them by rewinding this uh, uh, video. You know, it's no problem there. I just, you know, did not go through the formalities of explaining that when we broke for lunch. And uh, I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark. And based on the fast and furious, un unplanned ad lib. Uh, debate we had argument. Uh, I'm Did gonna, not have an argument. Did not have a debate. Well, we we, well, we shouted a, and cursed. That was emphasis. I was okay. told many years ago. See, he's not going to let me say what I'm. Right, that ahead. in my uh, readings and etc., I should be emphatic. Well, I we, am indeed. Well, emphatic. we we were a lot more than emphatic. But that was not argument or debate. That was an exchange. Yeah, I know. Of information. We, we got ferocious. Though. But someone was not allowing it in his ears because he already had a preconceived idea. All right. Uh, oh, what? It, what? Net? What? Parallel universe. Oh, cool. Contacting me. Um. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and see if I finally get it so I so we can put this to rest to rest so we can put this RIP this ferocious debate that always comes up to rest information exchange <laughs> yeah very in emphatic information exchange thank you there you got it very Bingo. Uh, very uh well when when I yell and use foul language it's very it's it's ultra emphatic uh the um the whole concept of supply side economics and trickle down yes the whole fantasy whether you apply it or whether you're lying about it is all a part of a capitalist form of government it's under capitalism whereas other political systems other economic systems do not rely on a trickle down or, or supply side system they are different so capital so am I being accurate by saying it only capitalism favors and and promotes a trickle down system. Bingo. Now I finally got it. And it has nothing to do with a business or a CEO. So if you so if you have a um, a hybrid like like they have in Northern Europe, a hybrid uh -huh. all right, Northern Europe has um, hybrid between capitalism and socialism. Or or some of them could be flat out socialist countries. I don't know. Uh, Scandinavia. Finland I maybe? I'm not sure. I know this Sweden that, is close. Denmark, uh, well, all the uh, Finland, Norway, Sweden. Sweden has a really nice system. Uh, uh, somebody who lives there, um, uh, who is from another country, who lives there, tells me they enjoy. Oh man, they enjoy to, uh, the ability to go to any university for free, take any course they want, mm -hmm. go to the doctor anytime they want. Mm -hmm. Great health care. Uh, and, 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 and the and if you're an employee in Sweden, oh you get tons of great perks and benefits and, mm -hmm. and, and, and even if you're a man, your paternity leave yeah. with pay. Paternity leave with yeah. pay is long. You I mean be it's, home with your child. Yeah, you got I mean and, and, and there's time there's plenty of leisure time to do the things you enjoy. Yeah, I think they get like six weeks vacation. Yeah, Something all that like good that. stuff. We get two weeks. So if we that get it. so that system of government economics, whatever you want to call it, 
supply side and trickle down does not apply to that system that they, that they have in Northern Europe. Finally, that is correct, Karnak. Finally, Karnak has got it. There you go. I, I was. Uh, they showed the stones of. They called them the stones of Karnak in uh, in the Brittany section of France. That's Egypt. Yeah, there, the Karnak. Karnak is yeah, in you're Egypt. right. Karnak yes. is not in France. Why did they call yeah. the stones Karnak? I have no idea. Yeah, well, Karnak was not invented by Johnny Carson. It, it, it's it's an actual historic place. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, continue. Actually, this is our first reading of this week's show because we didn't have time at the beginning. Yeah, I want to make sure I get uh, one of these uh, things in here on uh, Mr. Pluto here, okay? The planet Pluto. Yeah. Beautiful. First uh, time uh, ever close-up photos. Food and Drug Administration on Friday approved the first of its kind drug that lowers artery clogging cholesterol more than older drugs that have been prescribed for de these decades. Well, this is not Pluto. This is uh, something else. No, I want to read these others before that. Oh, okay, I want to okay. make sure that I get Pluto in here. Okay, okay, okay. The drug from Sanofi and Regenerin Pharmaceuticals, Inc. offers an important new option for millions of patients at high risk of heart disease. But the drug's sky-high price Fourteen thousand six hundred dollars a year is certain to escalate debate about the cost of breakthrough drugs and who should take them. This is a problem we have in, with the healthcare system in the United States, the, the capitalist healthcare system. My friend, uh, who has multiple sclerosis, has to pay twenty-five thousand dollars a year for her MS medication. It's insane. Well, now, here we go now, back to the old saw. Isn't those who require health insurance that is not private, aren't they a special interest? Well, a health insurance, a health insurance for people who are low income is a involves, involves group. people of all races and genders and, and walk all walks of life. You are you are attaching something that does not belong attached. Has no, nothing it's to not, do it's with not a special interest group. The poor is not a special yes, interest group. Yes, they are, but they are not a race or a gender. Right, or a sexual preference. Or a sexual preference. But they are a special interest group. You see. Well, yeah, there are people So that we are, cannot that just poor. out Landishly say and claim, I don't want to do anything for a special interest group, people. Well, you, you, you. When you say that, you have certain groups in mind. Well, you're like uh, you could say the same thing for giving privileges to the rich only. But we do that without anybody saying a word. You're right about that. Nobody well, says thank a word. you very much. Nobody says a word. That's why I was saying about the trickle down. You didn't seem to have a problem with siphoning it up to those rich yet bastards, and then maybe a little will trickle down. Ah, they're overpaid enough as it is. Jeez. They got enough money. Why should anything siphon up to them? But it does. I mean, the Walton family, the richest family in the world. How much money do they need? They need to. They need to be paying. The original 90% tax rate, that's what they need to be paying. Preluent yeah. is the first in a new class of biotech medications that use a novel approach to lower bad or LDL cholesterol. The drugs are considered the first major advance in treatment since the introduction of statin drugs more than 20 years ago. Statin drugs made its debut 20 years ago? Wow. And they should have made its exit uh, 19 years ago. They're not proven effective, are they? They destroy CoQ10 in the body. 
CoQ10, without CoQ10, what do you get? Heart disease. You need CoQ10, are you kidding? That's correct. Well, my, my doctor says... And energy, of course. My doctor says the statin drugs like Lipitor, they just come from something natural called red yeast rice. Or red <coughs> rice yeast. They do not come from something natural. Okay? Red, you know, you, you, you're familiar with red if rice yeast. If they did, they wouldn't be patented. And they are patented. Red rice yeast, I think it's called. You can't patent it. No, you can't okay. patent red rice yeast. That's good. But the prospect of introducing highly expensive injectable drugs for one of the most common medical conditions is drawing concerns from health insurers, doctors, and employers, especially since generic statin pills are now available for us as little as a dime a day. More than 73 million U.S. adults have high LDL, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Those patients have twice the risk of heart disease, the leading cause of death worldwide. The FDA approved Preluent for two groups of patients at highest risk of heart problems. The first group, patients with abnormally high LDL cholesterol caused by an inherited condition. Second group of patients with high LDL cholesterol and a history of heart attack, stroke, chest pain, and related conditions. Now the hereditary um, high LDL that is the situation where it is um, Im important to take the cholesterol lowering drug or, or, or the, they shouldn't even be on the cholesterol lowering drug. There are natural ways, but yeah. those are the uh, those are the two groups right now approved to take this yeah. drug. See I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming most high um, LDL cholesterol and or triglyceride is a blood sugar and insulin problem. And oxidation. Yeah. Oh, and and usually people that have that problem have a belly fat. It's usually synonymous. They have syndrome X usually. Yeah. Syndrome X. It's not just men that get belly fat. I, I, I've known women that had midsection fat, and they had similar problems that I just mentioned. They had well, in men, as we grow older, we get more estrogen in the body, and that leads to belly fat. Yeah, your 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 free testosterone and or DHEA uh, usually deplete as a man gets older, mm -hmm. so therefore your estrogen would be more predominant. Prevalent, that's correct. You know. Now, if I may proceed. Sure. Here is a problem we discussed many times in the past, but there was no evidence except what I said at the time for this stuff. Where was Assemblyman Eric Peterson Republican of Hunterton in 1995 when the New Jersey pension system was a triple A bond rated and Governor Christie Whitman oh boy. decided to not make regular payments into the pension fund while state and local government workers continued to do so and continue to do so today. Whitman stopped making the payments and used the monies to lower taxes and get herself re-elected. Good old New Jersey Republican politics. If you are a homeowner 
try telling your bank that you are not paying your monthly mortgage to save money as Whitman claimed she was doing 20 years ago by declaring a pension holiday. How would your bank respond? Bergen County government has a triple A bond rating because it soon realized that Whitman's pension holidays were going to municipalities. Wait a minute. Do we're going to backfire. So Bergen and other counties and municipalities began paying their pension share on a regular basis. Peterson doesn't explain or distinguish here. Nor does he present a realistic scenario of the differences in the overall pension payment process. Much less the so-called 80 billion dollar unfunded liability mantrum being used to mislead the public. So the assemblyman now seems to call for a side deal, excluding the worker retiree victims in the guise of putting aside partisanship. Is collusion what he's calling for? We hope not. Claiming to craft a responsible response to the folly began by Whitman without telling the whole truth to both the workers and the public and without involving the workers and retirees would be the most is is irresponsible act any, any legislature could commit today. Tripping over my tongue. Yeah, well, unfor unfortunately Nowadays, it's not just Republicans that are corrupt and up to no good and selling out to the, to the uh, you know, corporate whoring to the fat cats. It's, it's also many Democrats. Many Democrats are doing it, too. Um, and that's why there are only two ways of life. The get and the give, right and the wrong. Yeah, there was... Not Democrat, Republican. Uh, uh, libertarian, uh, well, they're being, uh, uh, they're, progressive and uh, conservative. They're being exposed, okay. little by little, week, weekly. They're, these Democrats, these sellout Democrats, are being exposed with their photo and their name and and, and you know what they're about. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, yes, I could, I could but again, I could write their name down and mention their names. But it's not just a couple here and a couple there. There are many that are selling out. But again, we should not fall into the trap like so many do. Well, they're not. They are both sides of the coin. They're the same. No, they're not the same. Well, they're not. We must not forget the crumbs. Well, the no, crumbs. The, these sellouts. I highly doubt if they will give you crumbs because they are anti-living wage. You know the things that come out of their mouth. They're 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 anti-living wage. They're anti um, uh, Obamacare, helping the poor. They they don't sound like if they were in power. Yeah, they would probably quote trickle down unquote a little crumbs to their constituents. So people would say, oh, we Re voted, them. we had a vote for the lesser of the two evils again because we had, we had to get our few crumbs so we could survive. And that's, the sad part is people are just surviving. They're not really living. When you, when you, when you lit, when, when you're existing just to pay your bills, Barely, if you can. That's not living in 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 the so-called greatest country in the world. That's just surviving, you know. And uh, when people tell me, uh, when the tea bagger says, "Well, how come everybody wants to move to the United States? How come you don't see people flocking to uh, your wonderful Scandinavian countries?" Ah, on the contrary. There are people there. leaving. It's hard to get there. 
To come over here, you just have to cross the Rio Grande. Are you talking about <laughs> south of the border? Yeah. Well, you don't see them running in from Canada, do you? No, I mean, Canada has their problems. There's no border up there, for Christ's no. sake. They can well, come in and find no one. I mean, Canada, I mean, they have their political corruption, but Canadians uh, don't want to come down here with with, with uh, the lousy system they have down here. Correct. <laughs> I would never condone racism or bigotry, and I would never vote for a candidate who is either of those. I don't believe Donald Trump is either one of those. But Trump does share a fear that a lot of American families have today. Our country seems so concerned and spends so much time taking care of those here illegally that it has affected many American communities some in good ways, but in most ways we are not being helped by an immigration policy that does not enforce the law. As an American citizen, I must obey every state, federal, town, or city ordinance and law. But people from other countries come here and seem to flout the liberties earned on the backs of all those who served in the military. That's more of a slight to our military than anything Trump said. For years Donald Trump has insisted that President Obama is not an American citizen. Not a peep out of the Republicans. Now, he is talking smack about them. Suddenly, he's on presidential. Yeah. Spoken like a true Republican. Well, the last, as far as the military goes, the last time they fought for our freedom in the United States was World War II. And that was the last war they won. That's the last war they won. That's correct. Other than that, all the other wars were for profit. All the other preceding wars were for profit. Our borders were not threatened, except for World War II. And um, getting back to the squabble between Donald Trump and um, John McCain. John McCain, being captured, being a POW, does not make you a war hero. Correct. Period. Period. All he did was get a purple heart. That doesn't make you a war hero. hero. The, the, he used the words war hero, hero, war hero in his political career, John McCain, because it sounds nice. But again, but Trump was truthful in that case. Trump was also truthful in the second part of that statement that he made. But all the media are concentrating only on the first part of that statement, the war hero thingy. But uh, Trump also said, Mon John McCain has done nothing for veterans. He has, no, he's, he has not. Look at his voting record. He votes against all help for all veterans. All the time. Correct. That is the important thing that came out of that. So the nerve of him to, to be pro-veteran when he's not is a complete lie. John McCain, and uh, uh, the most despicable is, is of course, G.W. Bush receiving was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think it was hundred. One hundred thousand dollars to speak in front of veterans. The nerve of him after what he did. It's not identifying. He it's should pay. Uh, he should pay the veterans. He should stay in his stupid ranch in Dallas and never show his face anywhere for the rest of his life a hermit well he's a him and Cheney are, are unconvicted uh, war criminals correct they are I, despicable human beings I mean I mean 4,000 victims later 
he wants a hundred thousand dollars to speak to veterans four thousand victims later in a war for profit okay um, uh, of course Billy Morrow doesn't want to accept the fact well, that the Republicans are there for profit and you know that the uh, weapons of mass destruction was a lie he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to accept the fact that unfortunately that everything is is a uh, big his IBM um, top executive father taught him about Business and corporations. That's what I was just and, going and to say. Capitalism. Your friend was a lie. Believes in fantasies. Well, just the, the fantasy. That whole flag waving, patriotic, phony lapel pin, you know, Humble Yankee Doodle down, Dandy yeah. crap. <clears throat> you know, everything corporate is wonderful. Every uh, what's good for business is good for the country. Uh, so uh, outsourcing is good for the country. The lie of trickle down again. The lie of trickle down. Yeah, outsourcing. Uh, oh, you know why they outsource? According to him, they outsource because of those damn unions want too much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wanting what is a, too much money. Wanting a living wage is too much money. Yeah. I mean, you could set up an economy tomorrow, and you could set up wages, and you could set up prices, and you could set. Then what is too much? Well, what about the CEO? What about the what if what if you come up tomorrow with an Apple uh, whatever, and you put a price of five hundred dollars on it? Is that too much? Yeah, who who determines? Is it too little? Who determines that? Yeah, if it doesn't sell, it's possibly too high. Maybe. Uh, uh, if um, if you um, but you'd have to experiment, wouldn't it? Depends what markup you're. You want you to make experiment, though. You know, well, like if if you're dealing with volume profit, like supermarkets, then you have to accept low a low markup, a low a low percentage. But if you're dealing with a high ticketed item, all right, let's say a, a new revolutionary tablet smartphone, Ooh. which they are going to come out with because they're going to they're going to use Tesla technology. The phone charges itself off the electricity that's in the environment. Okay, you put a price on it. How do you determine what the right price is? My point exactly. Now, it's, it's, you, right. you, it can be anything. But to a corporation, oh, the minimum wage, uh, uh, anything is too much money for the employer. But what about right. the CEO? What about the CEO? Siphon up is fine. Making millions a year. Siphon up is fine in America. Thousands of dollars an hour the average American CEO makes, but fifteen dollars an hour for employees is too much. Oh, work. Put me out of business, man. Yes, yeah, so, so, so Bill Murray, oh, those unions, those damn unions, those corrupt unions. Oh, they're all corrupt unions. Yeah. Like the, like the corporations are not corrupt. Those corrupt unions. They want too much money, so they force American companies to, to outsource. My, my Uncle Phil said the same thing. Bullshit. These are right-wing talking points. The cost of labor is tax-deductible, teabaggers and Republicans, conservatives. They don't get it. Well, they don't get the fact that uh, one day will come and all the jobs will be outsourced, all the corporations will be in foreign countries, and all we will be doing is buying their products, if we still have the money. Well, you need surplus cash to buy somebody's yes, product. Yes, you do. If you don't have a job. So if there's no corporations and no jobs, what happens to America? Kaput. Capute! Capute, yeah. So we should continue to allow corporations to do what they want to do, right? Yeah, and instead of trickling down, we'll, we'll be one big giant cesspool lake, polluted, toxic lake where we all would drown. As Ross Perot said, with, if NAFTA, NAFTA goes into effect, there will be one big sucking sound. 
from all the good things in America being sucked down to Mexico. He was very right. Correct. He was right. In this case, sucked to mainland China too, because their economy is booming. Now, of course, that does not happen under a social where you, as the people of the country, own the businesses. You will, of course, make laws to provide for the benefits of you and your fellow Americans in America. Not for some, so that they can move to a foreign country and take their money over there and don't bring it back here to be taxed. But hey, can we sell our products in America? Sure, why not? What the hell? You know, my friend in uh, in Shanghai, China, um, got a U.S. visa rather quickly to come here and live or work or whatever. Really quick. Uh, I mean, I mean, Latin Americans uh, don't have an easy time of it getting a, a, a U.S. visa. She's from China. Yeah, you think She's it's because China? China is so big and rich and know. powerful that it's easy for them to come back and forth? I don't know. I don't, uh, you know, I mean, it's not to understand it's the whole situation. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's Maybe the, it's just a visitor's visa. The embassy, well, there are different visas. Yes. You have a tourist visa, you have a student visa. Student visa, yeah, then H-1B. H-1B is when you can work here because an American company sponsors you. you. They need you because Americans are I'm too dumb and unskilled. We, that's the we best. Are unskilled. That, that, that's the best visa you know? a person from another country can get is Why an H one B. Yeah. Because if they get an H one B, their uh, their citizenship is not is not far away. If you if you if you're here, you you already have a job waiting for you. You're making money, and the corporation helps. You get your green card or whatever you're looking for. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah the pro yeah, you are the process the wheels are in motion. The processor is in motion to get your green card, your permanent residency with H one B. They're sponsoring it. Absolutely. Otherwise the government rips you off. You gotta pay like four or five hundred dollars a shot for you know this visa that visa you know all mm -hmm. this crap you got to pay to get the, the the authorization to work get a job yeah they they hit you every every which way and that's not counting the fees from the scamming uh, um, um, immigration lawyers oh, oh god yeah oh Don't god scam. it's like the student loan business it's all rigged Big scam, totally rigged. Nobody should have to pay out of pocket to go to school or to go to a doctor. To, to make it plain and simple. Yeah, well, we're, that's another example of siphoning up because that's what's going to happen. But Republicans, only the rich can afford school. The Republicans like that pay out of pocket way of living, but there's a there's a, a motive behind that I think they only want the rich kids to get a good education that's correct they want to dumb down that is correct the, sir they want to dumb down the general mainstream population they want to dumb you down make you poor and desperate so you end up being a drone a mindless slave a drone an oxen to pull oxen, the wagon a, a sucker to work for for uh, uh, peanuts, literally. They prefer nothing, actually, but, uh, you know. Slavery. They do have to feed you. And house you. Well, they, uh... Like they uh, did with the slave. What about all, all, the, all them dollar privatized prisons owned by corporations? That's, that's better than outsourcing. And guess who's paying them? Paying... The government sold the prisons to private concerns. Right. And guess who's providing the profits for them? Who? The government! But, I don't understand, don't they make, aren't they making money off of all the cheap labor? All of that stuff too. But the government is still paying them 
to house these crooks and etc. Listen. So why did they sell it in the first place? You know what's you know what's one of the biggest hypocrisies about conservatives? And in this case I have to label them because they're so vile, you gotta identify them. Okay. That's the fact that um, they used to always point the finger at um, liberal, well in those days you had more liberal Democrats than you do today. They used to point the finger and, and always say, wasteful pork barrel spending, hey. tax and spend liberals, tax and spend liberals. That's correct. If you took a bunch of the finest accountants and you audited the, uh, the government spending and you, you looked at all the wasteful spending that Republicans are responsible for. It's a big joke to call Democrats tax and spend wasteful pork barrel liberals. It's not a joke if those people believe it. Like they believed trickle down and supply side. Like they've accomplished their propaganda goal like, then, haven't they? Like the the uh, the the a liberal politician, a progressive politician, emphasizes the people over corporations, the people and the environment and the planet come first. Okay, so that means that what are social social services will be emphasized, uh, a health care, education will be emphasized, but that doesn't make up the, the astronomical percentage of what Republican waste. That is correct. The the, the latest military was budget created. is fifty seven percent of the budget. Uh excuse me. Really? Yeah. Fifty seven percent of the budget is military spending. Then you got subsidies. Then you got the interest payments. Add it all up, you're over like $1.4 trillion or more. And what is the welfare budget? The SNAP budget? Minuscule. Minuscule. Microscopic. Between 1 to 2 percent of the total budget. Uh, but what does Paul Ryan go after? And those other idiots? They all go after the poor. Oh, that tiny bit. Tiny bit. Oh, tax and Food spend. stamps. Food stamp. The, 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 thing, the thing that they bitch and moan about the most is food stamps, Obamacare, and, and gay marriage. They're obsessed with gay marriage. Well, anything to do with other people's sexuality, Republicans seem to be obsessed with. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> They have a problem with sex. They have really a problem with it. It's like a, it's a, like an obsession with, with your sexuality, what you do. Anyway, commence. Scientists have identified a close cousin to Earth that's orbiting a sun-like star, <coughs> excuse me, and might harbor life. Oh yeah, they're out there. The researchers announced their discovery on Thursday based on observations of the NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. The Kepler replaced the Hubble, I guess, right? I believe they were in different sections of the sky. I'm not sure. Now the Hubble's still up there? Yes, it is. It is the closest thing that we have to another place that somebody else might call home said John Jenkins, the lead data analyst from NASA's Ames Research Center in California. This older, bigger cousin to Earth is called Kepler 452b, as in boy. Oh, it's larger than the planet Earth. Yes, it is. What makes this planet remarkable is that it orbits its star 
at about the same distance as the Earth's orbit around the Sun. What's more, its home star looks to be similar to our Sun. Based on what scientists know today, this is the closest thing we have to another Earth-Sun twin system. Hmm. John Grunsfeld, NASA's science mission chief, said the X XO planet system, as far as we can tell, is a pretty good close cousin to the Earth and our Sun. The planet itself is the closest twin to Earth 2.0. This is about the closest so far, and I really emphasize the so far. One unanswered question is whether the planet is rocky. Adrian! Scientists believe there's a better than even chance it is. As for age and size, the planet is about 6 billion years old. 1.5 billion years older than the Earth. Wow. And 60% larger in diameter than the Earth. 60% larger in diameter. And what's the diameter? At about uh, 8,000 miles or something? Or, wait a minute. Diameter is, uh, 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 diameter is cut through, right? Yeah. And I think it's 8,000 miles. Circumference would be... That's, yeah, the radius, the circumference. That that would be twice the diameter. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, the 60% is quite a bit. Yes, it's a bigger diameter. Of course, if uh, if the Republicans uh, colonize it, they would destroy this other planet. They, would they have been wanting to cut NASA's budget and have for a long, a long time. Because they want to stick... They want to stuff all the NASA money into their pockets. Why do you think the Russians... They give it to their rich friends. The Soviet Union put up Sputnik before the United States put up a satellite. Well, most likely the conserva Cuts. conservatives don't want to spend money on anything government. Correct. Or science. Yeah. Can't privatize that because uh, the spacecraft would uh, fall apart before it enters space if it was privatized. Its star, Kepler 5452, is also older and bigger, as well as brighter, than our Sun. Planet 452b takes 385 days to orbit its star, just a little more than the Earth takes for a one-year lap. It's just a bit further from its star than Earth is from our Sun. The planet is in a solar system that is 1,400 light years away from our own. Located in the constellation Cygnus, or the Swan. Schlong? Swan! The Swan. So pack your bags, it's a long trip. You would have to go in suspended animation. And if when you get when you get back to Earth, probably all your friends and relatives will be dead. And gold will be worthless. Yeah, like the Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> it will be actually gold has been laboratory created. The only problem is process only renders a tiny amount like all the trouble you have to go through to make it I don't know okay it, 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 yeah it, you I end don't up know about this because bit. this would affect the price of gold it was in a documentary the price of gold sir. is big baby it was in right a price now. documentary sir it was in a documentary 
Stop believing these documentaries you see on it the internet. It was science. It showed the apparatus. It showed the scientists. It was a real documentary. What's the matter? They can make gold. You be careful. That Anything that's on ass. the internet is subject this to second opinion. Oh, so what appears on the History Channel... Oh, that even worse. You don't like the History Channel? History has been written by the victors. These are scientists, man. Do your history books have the accurate history that is, uh, occurs in the Bible? They showed the gold. I'm not talking about the gold now. I'm talking about believing things on the internet. And the history channel. Well, they, they you see, the problem I have is not the, the facts or the evidence that is found by archaeologists. I mean, that's all shown to you. The problem I have is that some of these scientists are taking theory and they're insisting that it's not theory anymore, that it's fact. it's fact. They are so obsessed with uh, the existence of extraterrestrials and, and them and how they interacted with man throughout the ages mm -hmm. to help and assist man. And where are they today? And, 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 and it's like, but they are, instead of saying their opinion is th in theory, they're pushing their opinion on other people, which is kind of like right-wing fundamentalists do when they, they force or push their fake, phony, fraud Christianity on other people. And people are too lazy to check it out with a second opinion, end up believing it. If it's a theory, leave it alone. Leave it as a theory. No, there are theories that are good. The a theory is a step in a progression to prove something. Right, but don't don't insist that... Of course not. ...that um, everything... But don't they do that with the theory of evolution? That everything in religion, that everything in any religion, not just the Bible, they talk about other religions... It's true. ...is all has to do with the interaction of extraterrestrials with humans. All of it. Where are they today? Extraterrestrials? Yeah. Well, they're shy. Ah, my right. God, what the hell? Oh, come on, let me finish here. All, All right, right, finish, finish. Planet 452B... Yeah, they're shy, baby. ...is among more than 500 new entries listed in the Kepler team's latest catalog of exoplanet candidates released on Thursday. Hot diggity dog. Now, here's a little something. A little, a little something. Controversial. Uh oh. Controversy? More than we already covered? Uh, yeah, I think so. Wow. In fact. Wow. Uh, in fact, uh, they may come after the show. Has to do it. Uh, Once I say, poopers? when this thing is finished. Once I add my aside. May. ISIS might come after the show. Well, is this something Heads that... Heads might roll. Is this something that is that is in the media? It will never be in the media. It's, it's not in the media. No. It has never been spoken. Never been spoken. It has been written about many, many moves ago. Well, I know that, that right-wing extremists is not just reserved ah. for for Christ, for for phony uh, for right wing fundamentalist Christians. Yeah. It's not reserved only for re, for conservatives or for Christians. Right wing extremism yeah. has been around yeah. for a long time, I guess. Because there are only two ways of living: get and give, right and wrong. And today we divide it up in conservative and liberal. I, I know. And liberal. I know. I, I did read an article on um, the internet that is not shown in the American media of a 17-year-old 
Muslim girl that was stoned to death by like a thousand Muslim men oh, for those righteous men for dating for dating someone who was not Muslim. She was yeah. uh, she was involved with a person who was not Islamic. And they, they were all to, thought they were doing Allah's work. Her, they put uh, they put him. Uh, her to death. Now my 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 question to anybody of any religion, any religion, yeah. is how do you know what God is really thinking? How do you know what how God feels about any anything, any subject, any? How do you know? Does the, do do you have a bat phone to God? Do you really talk to God and He answers you? That's my question. No, so, it's written down. So how could it's written down in the Quran? But uh, 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 what? a Muslim friend of mine. You're trying to make me say what I want to. Okay, I'm just I saying. I want to hold till the uh, end. All right, hold it. I just want to tell you, a Muslim friend of mine from Afghanistan by the name of Habib. Habib! He gets very upset when the American media portrays Islam in only the eyes of the extremists. The radicals. The radicals. Ma uh, making Americans think that this is how the Quran and all Muslims are. That's and, the and mistake he, that Bill Maher makes. And I, I was discussing with him and he was very upset about it, mm -hmm. about the Sharia law. And all right, go ahead. I won't and say I am upset when people portray Christianity as coming from the Bible. The evangelicals and the Baptists and etc. Okay? Keep on hearing same thing noises here it's out there spirits is there a drone up in the up in the plant somewhere it's gentlemen out there how come I hear it coming they're out there a British University disclosed on Wednesday that scientific tests prove a Quran manuscript in its collection is one of the oldest known and may have been written close to the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, well, uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad received his information from the Archangel Jabril, Gabriel, Gabriel. That's the story. Right, and then the, right. the, the first caliph destroyed the original writings? Let's not get there yet. All right, let's not get there yet. Jeez. The announcement by the University of Birmingham thrilled Muslim scholars and local community, which boasts one of the country's largest Muslim populations. The find came after questions raised by a doctoral student prompted radiocarbon testing that dated the parchment to the time of the Prophet, who is generally believed to have lived between 570 and 632. A.D.? Yes, A.D. This manuscript could well have been written just after he died. Now that's not an accurate statement because he wrote it while he was living. David De Thomas, a professor of Christianity and Islam at the University of Birmingham, said of the fragment written in ink on goat or sheepskin. Wow. Parts of the Quran that are contained in those fragments are very similar indeed to the Quran we have today. This tends to support the view that the Quran that we now have is more or less very close indeed to the Quran as it was brought together in the early years of Islam. Muslim tradition says the Prophet received the revelations of the Quran between 610 and 632. But it wasn't written down immediately. 
I have a problem with that. The first leader of the community after Muhammad's death was Caliph Abu Baker ordered the book to be written and it was completed by the third Caliph Uthman in 650. Okay, we're getting a hit. We're getting a good solid history lesson here. Ah, uh, yeah. But now the history takes a turn because the only Qurans that we have in existence today are the ones written by the third Caliph Uthman, and he expurgated the Quran. So he expurgated. It's been censored. And uh, censored, altered, whatever you want to call it. Correct. The original writings from Muhammad. Correct. Well, that's and that good. seems why these radicals and the other Muslims have the problems with each other. Is there any evidence that, that um, the original writings can be found of Muhammad? Well, they said that that was one. This book. Right. However, no. as far as I know, carbon oh. dating is not accurate in the short run. From what I hear, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that is only like 1,500 years ago. It seems well, short run to me. Doesn't it sound like um, conservatives that want to rewrite the Christian Bible today? They have already done so. Well, their version, but it's not, there are it's several not, it's not new, the original Bible. There are several new versions out. But I don't, I would never read them. I would never, I would never acknowledge them. But how would you know if you couldn't compare them with something? Well, if you, if you have the, the, if you have the King James Bible, which what you told me was the first English translated Bible. Well, the ones with the, these dies and thou's in it. Yes, and, and, you, and you have one. a... Um, that was the first one printed by the printing press. A concordance with it. Right. If you have that, why on earth would you need any, any other modern edition? Supposedly, the, some of the modern editions have a better translation. You mean they don't have the these dies and thou's? They do not have those, but that's not the problem. The problem is the context. Oh, yeah. There is one, there is one, I believe it's, uh, it's Ezekiel or Ezekiel 28 or Isaiah 28 or whatever, where it describes Satan. Yeah. But in the new versions, it's not Satan. So if you could not compare that with the King James, how would you know that? So they're violating the last, the last uh, chapter of the Book of Revelation. Well, they indeed are. Yeah, just if you don't know what I mean. Do they check not it violate out. that every day on Wikipedia? You mean, huh? you mean, you mean the the phony counterfeit Christians violate? Yes, they change it every day. <laughs> if you say something accurate, they go up there and they change it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, uh, lying in everyday life. It happens, but. But misrepresenting the Bible, the Word of God, and lying about that, it's a pretty big sin according to God. But how would you know if you only had the new revised edition? Well, if you were a numbskull and, 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 and uh, uh, your average teabagger Joe six-pack, and all you had was this new one, uh -huh. and you had nothing to compare it to, right. then all you would know is the rewritten Bible. That's correct. That is correct, Unfortunately. Sir. Anyone, thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, I mean, I, it's, it's ad-libbed, un unrehearsed. Sometimes the, the shit hits the fan, you know, but that's the beauty of uh, uncensored and unscripted. We'll see you next week. Next week on my birthday. Bye-bye.
you bringing the cake? Uh, I'm on low carb pro, uh, oh, dietary that program. Looks in this guy, sugarless, sugar-free. Uh, I don't know, uh, Carvel ice cream cake. Hey, that sounds. Good. That could get kind of messy. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.